TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo asserts that Israeli annexation of the West Bank is ultimately Jerusalem's decision. U.S. President Donald Trump orders the American Navy to attack any hostile provocation by vessels of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards of Iran. EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell has unashamedly condemned the United States over its refusal to lift its international sanctions on the Islamic Republic. The Israeli Health Ministry released its latest accumulated data vis-à-vis -vis the unyielding spread of the corona contagion, confirming a surge of another 639 cases, which raises the number of afflicted individuals throughout the Jewish state to 14,592, of whom 136 are diagnosed in critical condition. I'm sad to report that as of 9 o'clock this morning, another four individuals succumbed to the corona disease, raising the total number of Israeli corona-related victims to 191. Meanwhile in Jerusalem, the Israeli parliament's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee decided not to renew the government's mobile tracking methods of civilians that have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The Israeli government initially applied the sophisticated spyware as a verification method for diagnosed patients that are required to remain in quarantine. As part of the use of the privacy invasive measure, which is usually applied only to counterterrorism, the government adopted regulations to ascertain legal backing to the application of the sophisticated tool against civilians. Since the Israeli parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, once again functions in full to oversee the government's activities, its Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee decided to grant several court appeals that are challenging the measure to attain relevant answers from the state before renewing the legally required regulations. Meanwhile, in light of circulating reports about the possibility that Israel's newly established national emergency government could ultimately move ahead on separate election pledges, of both Premier Benjamin Netanyahu and Parliament Speaker Benny Gantz to annex significant parts of the West Bank, including the Jordan Valley and the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria, the Palestinian Authority has stepped up its efforts in recent days to combat the conceivable Israeli measure. The Authority's chairman, President Mahmoud Abbas, revealed in a televised address to the Palestinian people that he would regard all past agreements with both the United States and Israel null and void if the latter would move to assert its sovereignty over territories the Palestinians demand for their aspired state. وسوف نعتبر كل الاتفاقات والتفاهمات بيننا وبين هاتين الدولتين لاغية تماما. It is important to know that Israeli officials from both camps within Jerusalem's newly established emergency government refused, in response to a TV7 inquiry, to confirm nor deny any government plans for asserting Israel's sovereignty over the referred to territories. Furthermore, a Palestinian source explained to TV7 that President Abbas's remarks were actually made in response to a statement during a State Department press briefing earlier last night regarding Israeli annexation by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. We're happy with that a new government's formed, a fourth election we think wouldn't have been in uh, Israel's best interest, but we'll leave that to them. We think it's not in the world's best interest. We're glad that there's a now fully formed government in Israel. As for the uh, annexation in the West Bank, uh, the Israelis will ultimately make those decisions. Those, that's an Israeli decision, uh, and we, uh, we will work closely with them to share with them our views of this in a private setting. Secretary Pompeo went on to address the latest developments pertaining to Iran's malign activities, including yesterday's announcement by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, commonly known by its acronym IRGC, which declared the successful launch of a military-grade satellite into orbit. While Tehran officials repeatedly insisted that its aspired space program was solely for civilian purposes, 
The RGC's top commander confirmed last night following the launch that the Iranian-controlled satellite effectively bolsters the regime's strategic intelligence and information capability. گسترش قلم رو به توانمندی های اطلاعاتی راهبردی با استفاده از این موفقیت به یک جهش رسیدیم. In response to this brazen admission, in addition to an official statement on the RGC website referring to the satellite as military grade, Secretary Pompeo highlighted once again Iran's continued terror-related activities, all the while blatantly advancing a campaign of deceptive propaganda vis-à-vis -vis the international community. The Iranians have consistently said that these missile programs were disconnected from the military, that these were purely commercial enterprises. I think today's launch proves what we've been saying all along here in the United States. The IRGC, a designated terrorist organization, launched a missile today. And uh, I'll leave to the Department of Defense to talk about the details about that. Uh, but when you talk about the UN Security Council Resolution 2231, I think every nation has an obligation to go to the United Nations and evaluate whether this missile launch was consistent with that Security Council resolution. I, I don't think it remotely is, and I, need, I think Iran needs to be held accountable for what they've done. They've now had a, a military organization that the United States has designated terrorists attempt to launch a satellite. The top American diplomat further stressed that while the people of Iran suffer from the uncontrollable spread of the coronavirus throughout their country, the latest developments once again reveal the true nature of the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. The Iranian regime has gone around the world spreading disinformation in response to this virus. Uh, one of the things they've said is that, boy, we need resources in order to take care of the virus at home. And all the while, they are launching satellites, <laughs> driving ships around the uh, Arabian Gulf coming and harassing U.S. naval vessels. Uh, they continue to underwrite Shia militias. They're working to support Hezbollah. Yesterday, my Iranian counterpart of the day before was in Syria, talking to the butcher in Damascus. Um, I hope that the Iranian regime will respond to the Iranian people's demands to prioritize resources, resources that the Iranian regime clearly has, to the health and security and safety of the Iranian people rather than continuing their global terror campaign. You can see they're still hard at it. You can see they still have resources. Uh, you should note, we, the, at the very first news that the COVID virus had hit Iran, offered a humanitarian assistance to the people of Iran. That offer was rejected. That offer still stands. We've assisted other countries at delivering humanitarian assistance to the Iranian people. I only wish that the Iranian regime cared about its people as much as the rest of the world has demonstrated that it does. Following TV7's previous report on provocative maneuvers by naval vessels belonging to the RGC against the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard, which occurred within international waters of the Persian Gulf, another such incident had reportedly occurred a day later, which once again indicated a rise of tensions between the Islamic Republic and the United States in the strategic waterway. While the first report was blatantly rejected as baseless by Iran's defense minister Amir Hatami, the second reported incident was covered by Iranian state television, which referred to the U.S. battle group as terror vessels. In response to these latest developments, U.S. President Donald Trump instructed his country's navy to destroy any Iranian vessels that attempt a similar maneuver. Uh, we don't want their gunboats surrounding our boats and traveling around our boats and uh, having a good time. We don't want them anywhere near our boats. And so you know the order I gave. I don't think I have to say it again, but I've given that order. Uh, under the Obama administration, it was taking place all the time. Under my administration, I gave this order early on, and nothing happened. They were very nice. There was no problem. But then I noticed yesterday they did that in a much lighter form, but they did that again. I said, we're not going to stand for it. So if they do that, that's putting our ships at danger and our great crews and sailors at danger, in danger. I'm not going to let that happen. And we will. They'll shoot them out of the water. Meanwhile, in Brussels, the EU foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, has unashamedly condemned the United States over its refusal to lift its international sanctions on the Islamic Republic, while stopping short from even referring to the latest military-related developments vis-à-vis -vis Iran. I regret, really, I regret that the Americans are, in the United States are opposing the International Monetary Fund to take this decision. I think that for the humanitarian point of view, 
it, this decision, this uh, request should have been, should have been uh, accepted. The top EU diplomat further claimed that Iran was in dire need for additional financial support because of its seeming lack of capital to finance its battle against the spreading corona disease. The problem is the capacity of uh, Iran to, to have the capital, to have the resources to buy, to pay for the resources they need in order to fight against the coronavirus. And for that humanitarian, for that humanitarian fact, they have needs they cannot uh, fulfill due to the fact that they don't have the capital required for that. It is important to know that while no accurate figures have been publicized vis-à-vis -vis the latest RGC launch of its military-grade satellite, intelligence sources told TV7 that the related costs of such a launch can amount between a quarter to half a billion U.S. dollars, excluding the unspecified military hardware. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray today for the peace and salvation of India, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.